Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about meals that the whole family can enjoy, especially the kiddos. Now wait, if you find yourself not having kids, or maybe you have kids that have left the house or are you know, teenagers, that doesn't mean this video won't be helpful to you because I am gonna be showing meals that, again, the whole family can enjoy and that the kids will find appealing as well. At least, at least mine do. So make sure you stay and check them out. You may find them delicious and maybe one of them will be your new favorite meal. Now, before we get started, I just wanna say hi to those of you who are new here. My name is Tia and on this channel, I love to show you how you can live and thrive on a whole foods plant-based diet really easily. I release a video every Monday, so make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a new video. Also, I mean, look, I know I have a ski cap on in my house. It's like in the 20s outside and in my house, it's freaking cold. So I'm gonna keep my hat on because it keeps me warm. And I don't know, I think it's kind of cute. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thing and keep my hat on, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's get on to these meals. But before we do, I wanna make sure I let you know that everything you're gonna see here today, they are in the category of quote unquote pantry chef meals. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say pantry chef, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check out my tips and tricks playlist. I will link that in the description box and up above. But in there, I have a handful of videos where I talk about my pantry and becoming a pantry pantry chef. And what that basically is, you know, in a nutshell, is it's going to allow you to shop based off the inventory in your pantry versus meals that you may be searching for on the internet. This will change the game for you when it comes to meal planning. You really don't have to plan for meals anymore when you have groceries all the time in your house. It's pretty awesome. So I would highly recommend checking those out. Because here's the deal, I keep my kids' meals just as simple as I keep my meals. Why would I keep my stuff simple and then go and complicate things with extravagant meals for them? No, everything is simple in this house. Well, well, when it comes to food, and it's staying that way. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, what about the times where you make something and your kids don't like it? Like, what if, what if you're making something that's not a meal that everyone likes, you know? Um, and I'm gonna address that after we do these meals, so make sure you stay to the end so you can hear me, you know, chit-chat about that info. So let's get to this first meal. It is as dark as night outside. I am lucky. I have enough window light to be doing this video. Um, so I'm gonna probably have to put on my overhead kitchen lights, but that's okay. I mean, we can do, we can do a yellowish hue sometimes for the meals, right? It doesn't always have to be gorgeous looking, or I mean, that does help, you know. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Okay, so for this pasta salad, I'm just throwing in some bow tie pasta. This is just regular Whole Foods brand pasta. I believe it's just drum wheat is the only ingredient in here. And I sometimes will get brown rice pasta, but this one actually had more fiber and protein in it. So I just picked it up last week, thought I would try it out. The kids love the little bow ties, and I don't know, it, it's working for us. So the first thing I'm doing is just cutting up some tomatoes that we're gonna be adding. And then we're gonna add spinach. Now you can add basil if you want. Basil is really good in this if you don't wanna do spinach. I just like to add spinach because it's getting in a lot of greens for not only my kids, but for myself and my husband. And I actually put a ton of spinach in my plate, just extra spinach. So I am kind of diluting the calories from the pasta. So still eating the same amount of volume, my, my, still eating a big old bowl, but um, it's, uh, it's pasta and a lot of veggies versus just a big bowl of pasta. 
All right, now we're gonna make our dressing and I'm just gonna be doing my Hungry Vegan Mama dressing. I will link this uh, recipe from the blog in the description box for you below, but I'm actually just gonna show you how I make it right here. So for this portion that I'm making right now, this is just a portion for my kids. Normally I'll double what you see me making right here. That goes for the pasta, um, the tomatoes, the spinach, and for the dressing. But like I said, right now I'm just gonna be doing like a serving for just my kids. So to make this dressing, I just did one tablespoon of tahini, and I'm going to provide the nutritional information for this just so you can see how easy it can be to have a balanced meal, not only for yourself, but for your kids if you're just eating a good variety of plant foods and not restricting. It's not hard to do, you don't even really have to think about it. So I just added a tablespoon of soy sauce, and then I'm gonna add a little cap full of apple cider vinegar. And then I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of water in there. You can put like a teaspoon. And if you feel like more, you need more, you can add more. And then we're just gonna mix that up. All right, so next I am straining the pasta and just rinsing it off to make it cool. I like to serve this as kind of like a, like a cool pasta salad. It's not really cold because I don't stick it in the refrigerator. But you can also do this hot if you want. You can strain the pasta and then throw it back. Let me turn that off. And then just throw it back in the pot and then, you know, maybe turn the fire on, add the, add the dressing, add some um, spinach and tomatoes and mix it all up. Let the spinach wilt. So you can do it hot if you want to, but like I said, we just prefer it cold or cool gonna throw my pasta in and if you find it's like really wet you can just you know let it sit out and dry or if you're in a hurry I just kind of dab it with paper towel just a paper towel or two and then of course I recycle and then let's pour in our tomatoes toss in our spinach And then once that's mixed well enough, I like to add the dressing. And then we'll mix that again. And then there you have it, a nice yummy pasta dish that the whole family can enjoy. Now we'll say this, if you want to add more protein with this, go ahead and throw in some tofu. You can throw in edamame, which really, I, I probably should have did because my kids love edamame, and that will really add a lot of um, protein to this meal. So that's a great idea as well. For this edamame soba noodle bowl, or as my son likes to call it, Chinese pasta. I just need two pots, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just pour in some frozen shelled edamame, just to kind of defrost it in this boiling water. And you can just put as much as you want. I'm gonna actually be making one to two servings. This is usually just the amount I make for my kids when I make it for them. So as that's defrosting, I'm going to pour in just a little bit of veggie broth into this pot. And I'm going to be sauteing some carrots. Now I normally use shredded carrots for this, but lately we've kind of been liking the carrots a bit chunkier. So we, I've just been taking these little mini carrots and cutting them up and then a teaspoon of minced ginger. I might actually even do half of a teaspoon. We're not like huge ginger fans. I'm gonna scoop these out and just put them to the side. Now that the edamame is all out, um, I'm going to be putting in one little bunch of these soba noodles into this water. So I'm just gonna put these in there. And then I'm gonna turn off the fire. And these cook like within four minutes. Now I'm just gonna take these little shelled edamame, pour those in there. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of organic rice vinegar. 
And then about a tablespoon of t or two of reduced um, soy sauce. It really just depends on how much you like of this stuff. I like the flavor to be more soy sauce than I do rice vinegar. So I usually add a little more soy than I do vinegar. Yeah, these look really great. So I'm just gonna strain these really quick and then pour them in there. All right, so now we're just gonna combine the two, stir it around, give it a little taste to see if we need to add any more soy sauce or vinegar, and we are good to go. You guys, this is such an easy and yummy dish, and it's full of healthy fat and protein from the edamame, lots of fiber. I love giving this to my kids. Okay, and no YouTube video would be complete without forgetting something. I forgot to saute about three pieces of garlic, three little garlic cloves. So I'm just gonna add a little half a teaspoon without having to saute it, mix it up, and then we'll be good to go. Next on the list, we are doing a smoothie. You may be thinking, uh, a smoothie for like a meal? Isn't this a snack? And yeah, it can be a snack, but should it be a snack? I think smoothies are great, but they can get really calorically dense. You may not realize it, but people, sometimes maybe you, pack in the calories with smoothies. So when my family eats them, we like to eat them as a meal. If we eat this as a snack, we are adding an extra, let's say 300 to 350 calories to our daily meals. I don't, of course, count my kids' calories, but I am aware of you know how much they are eating. I don't wanna give them a smoothie for a snack that's full of 500 calories. What I'm putting in this smoothie was half of a banana, about a cup of frozen cherries, one half a cup of oats. I love to put oats in there because it makes the smoothie creamy and you are adding some extra fiber and some extra protein. And then I put about a tablespoon of ground flaxseed in there. And then I am gonna add about half of a cup to one cup of just unsweet vanilla almond milk. And then we're gonna blend that up. Next, I just steam some broccoli or cook it in my Instant Pot. And this is one bag of frozen broccoli. So this is it right here. My kids can eat each about half of the bag. Um, you know, sometimes they eat a little less than that, but um, for the most part, they each have about half of the bag, which is great. This is the nutritional yeast we have been liking on top of it. This is just from Frontier Co-op. All right, so now on to what I promised you before we went on to the meals. We're going to talk about what happens if you are just making a meal and your kids say, mom, we don't wanna eat that and you have to make something else for them. Now, I know there are those of you out there who say, well, if my kids don't wanna eat what we eat, they have to make their own food. And listen, everyone has to do what's best for their family and I get it. For me in this house, I don't do that. Uh, I may one day, but my kids are seven and five and they can't quite make their own food. So I have the job of making the food for them if they don't wanna eat what I eat. I'm not gonna let them starve. So what I do is I made a list and I showed this last week on my video really quick, but I know not everyone gets to see every video that I have. You should, you should go check it out if you haven't seen it. It's, it's, right, it's right up here or is it right here? 
it's, it's up there somewhere. But what I do is I make a list that I keep on my refrigerator with very fancy, very fancy paper. And I just put on there things that Finley likes that are plant-based, things that Max likes that are plant-based, and things down here in this nice little box in the lower right hand corner of what they both enjoy. That way, when I am cooking something and they tell me that they don't wanna eat it, I can say, okay, well why don't you try it? I ask them to try it and if they don't wanna eat it, I can quickly find something on here, something like cereal or oatmeal, okay, I'm going down Finley's list, or nuts, and fries. She loves when I make just um, fries, you know, no oil, just fries in the oven from potatoes. Um, Max loves Chinese pasta that I showed you. That's what he calls it. Stir fry, which is my not fried fried rice in the video from last week. If you want that recipe, you should definitely check it out. Protein shakes, ramen noodles, you know, sushi bowls, all of these things are really easy to make. Now, if my kids want something like cereal, number one, it's not a horrible sugary cereal that you find at the store. It's usually straight up bran flakes. They love that. So I'll make them a bowl of bran flakes and I'll couple that with a lot of veggies and maybe a little while after they eat, they'll have a little fruit for dessert. I'm making sure I'm making a complete meal for them. I'll give them a little handful of nuts for some healthy fat. But again, those are all very simple simple things. Bran flakes, fruit, veggie, a little nuts. I'm not really doing anything extravagant. Peanut butter toast with an apple and a veggie. Ramen noodles, super quick and easy to make with a whole bunch of broccoli and for dessert they'll probably have a little bit of fruit. But like I said last week, I highly recommend keeping a list handy until you can just spit out these different things that your kids like, you know, and you just know offhand. Having a list is gonna help you get things going really quick. What I always do is when I'm making my husband and I's food, because obviously the kids said they didn't want to eat it, so now it's become my husband and I's meal. So when I'm making that meal, I don't have to sit around and stress myself out like, oh, what am I gonna make the kids, you know? I can just look on the list and just pick something really quick and whip it up while I'm making our meal. And then when I'm done, we can all sit down together and have our, our different meals. So I hope that makes sense to you. The thing is, is again, to not complicate the kids meals if they don't want to have what you're having just keep their stuff just as simple as your meals but it is nice to have a handful of meals that everyone can enjoy together and i hope that the ones that you saw today can be those meals for you if you love hearing tips and tricks on how to make this lifestyle easy and stick Make sure you check the link in the description box on my new ebook, Simple Vegan Mama, where I show you just that. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like this, make sure you let me know in the comments. I'm not gonna know unless you tell me, so that would be really good. <laughs> Otherwise, I will see you guys next Monday. I'm gonna go light a fire and warm myself up. And um, I hope y'all have a great week and keep yourself warm. Bye.